Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the American Sports Connection. I'm your host, the one and only Joey Railroads. I'm here with my good buddy, Ryan Ennis. Ryan, how are you, sir? I'm okay. Uh, I can't, can't really complain. I can, but... No one listens anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how are you? I'm alright, man. It just seemed... I told my mom this earlier. I, it seems like this month just flew by. Yeah, yeah, you're not kidding. It's both know. been a very long and short month for me. Like it's it's weird. August felt so much longer. I mean, I have reason for both, but yeah, you know, it's it's less than two weeks to my surgery. I'm fucking terrified now. I can imagine because what's this number three, four? Oh fuck. Yeah, I had my labral repair. I actually, it's going to be one day shy of three years from my first surgery when I have this one. We're going to start calling you Jax. Yeah, bro. That's what everybody said after the first one. Like, is there like a broken Jax? Like, is there like a Jax prototype? Because like, that's me then. Hey, you're, you're the one that only has the one bionic arm. <laughs> and it, yeah, a bionic arm is broken. Oh, yeah. man. That's crazy. Three years. Time, time flies, dude. Lasted longer than my marriage did. Well, what can you do one day at a time? Yeah, I just look at it like this. In a year from now, hopefully, I'll have a house and I'll be banging eighteen-year-olds for the rest of my life. There you go. So, and maybe by this time next year, we'll be planning on going on the next Jericho cruise together. Hey, there you go. When is it anyway? Usually. I think it's later months because I think this is still hurricane season. Yeah, because I thought November, it was in like December, the spring, right? Mm-mm, mm-mm. November or December. Oh wow! Yeah, it's been that long. God damn! I think it was end of October last year. To be honest with you, I'm gonna look it up. Bear with me. Yeah, the, ju- just for curiosity. Yeah, it was. I, I'm. I was thinking that it was the end of October last year. I just wanna. It's it's January. Okay. Okay. It's January this year. It's January twentieth to the twenty fourth. That could have been last year then too. Um, I, I I don't know why I thought it was October. I thought it was like October twenty fifth. Yeah, but it's not a lot of days. Like, and and to me, that's what makes it really like. If you really have the money, that's fine because it's only a couple of days. That's a lot of money for a cruise. Like, if you go look up a seven day cruise on like Carnival compared to what that is, you'll find that they're equal. Jesus. Or the Carnival is more expensive. I mean, or or this is more expensive per room than Carnival. Shit, I might rather want to go to Mania Week than spend all that kind of money for four fucking days. <laughs> you see, and then my argument is, it's like, you can always do something else if you're in a city. If you're on a ship and you really don't like the people, you don't like the environment, you're kind of stuck on that ship. That too. Which, I mean, I love cruising. Like, yeah, I really do. I, I've, I, I've seen some cool places. I've, I've met cool people. It's a great way to travel. But... You know, it's, it's, you, like, so, somebody like me who's easily pissed off by people, like, I would run the risk of, like, fuck, I'm, did I just surround myself with people that I'm going to have a miserable week with? Yeah, I And now I can't go nowhere. Everywhere I go, I'm going to be surrounded by these people who are driving me crazy. I get it. So. But it's but something I would do if I went with a friend. I wouldn't do it alone. I hear you. All right, before we get rolling with news and stuff, uh, don't forget to check out our social media stuff, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at ASC Pods. I figure we might as well start with the pay-per-view, Clash of Champions. All right, uh, do you have the card in front of you? Yes. Okay. Uh, start at the bottom of the card. Uh, we had our uh, pre-show match, which was the Cruiserweight title match. Yeah, a good match. It, that was uh, Humberto... Uh, yeah, and Lince Dorado. Lince, yeah, and uh, Gulak. Uh, 
what you would expect from them. Kind of sloppy in spots. Um, but yeah, I I don't know why this belt isn't being featured more on the like at all on the main roster, like on the main card ever. But it looks like it's going to be heading probably to takeovers. Yeah, so I really can't complain about that. Oh, no, no. I think they're going to be used a lot better in NXT anyway. I agree with you. Um, the, uh, This is the other one that surprised me that was on the pre-show. AJ defeating Cedric Alexander. Bro, and it's like they squashed Cedric. Like, that was a squash. He had a little bit of offense, and then AJ just took over, and that was it. In his hometown, no less. And apparently, Vince soured on him very quickly. I... I... It seems like Vince always does that to guys in their hometown. Yeah, but this was really weird because it's like he's been very behind. And it's like not even like they gave it at all back to him the next night because he took the pinfall on Raw also. Yeah, he got his ass kicked on Raw too. So, you know, it's just been, again, rumors that Vince just doesn't like him anymore. Jesus. This is why Vince needs to, like, go because, you know, like you start with things and... You know, and then you just stop. And it, it, it's not fair to the talent who's doing what they're supposed to. I mean, he's had great matches so far. I know. The the biggest one I always remember is he, he started up Luke Harper, and we'll get into it with him later. And he said he didn't want to push him because he didn't do directly what he said on a promo. Oh, is that what it supposedly was? Remember, um... Remember Harper talked about it on Jericho's podcast. I don't know if I remember hearing that. This was when he had the Intercontinental title, and he made him drop it in that ladder match because he didn't use uh, a New Orleans Southern accent. Oh, wow. Because that's where Bray's from, and his... Uh, well, where he's billed from, and Harper was like, well... His, his thing was, you know, he has a lot of followers. He doesn't necessarily have to have a southern accent. It could be from, it could be from anywhere. Yeah. Huh. But that's just but, something that I always remember. But then they pushed him, that. though. But then they pushed him after that with, with the Bludgeon Brothers. Then they gave him a fucking title run. I know. It's weird. So I, I, you know, I mean, it, Vince could have been angry about that at the time, but I don't think that's indicative of because apparently he just hates everything fucking Luke Harper does. Like that's what was said. Like he went as far as to shit on the match he had with Dijakovic at um, Worlds Collide, which was considered a great fucking. Yeah, I remember match. it. It was awesome. And he, Vince apparently hated it for absolutely no reason. <laughs> which is weird why he's back, but we'll get into that as we go along. Alright, so yeah, uh, AJ beat uh, Cedric after fucking just... I don't know why they're doing it to Cedric, but yeah, AJ, AJ won that. And then uh, we opened the show with Rude and Ziggler becoming the new uh, Raw Tag Team Champions. Um, What did you feel about that? Like, how it happened and everything? Like, I what's liked your opinion? That, I liked that they won, but I, I thought they could have... Like you said uh, last week, that they could have like dragged it out a little more. Yeah, for storyline purposes, I think it could have just at least been kind of nifty to see like what they would do with like champion uh, tag team champions versus each other. Like it's Vince likes to have firsts and all of this, so the first time tag team champions, you know, fight each other for the title. But I was okay with how it was done. I, I was ha like I'm happy Braun didn't take a pinfall, and I'm happy that. Um, Seth only took a pinfall after a big, like, uh, same team bump into opponent finisher. So it seemed a little bit more realistic than just your fucking world champion taking the title. Yeah, I mean, like taking, a whoopsie. Yeah. yeah, like your world champion taking the pinfall. Yeah. I know he's not the world champion, but you know what I mean. No, he's basically the world champion of that show. Yeah, yeah, because I don't even think they have a world champion right now, so. If I say world champion from here on out on, on this podcast, I just mean the top champion on that show. I got you. But no, I thought it was cool because I'm happy to see Ziggler and Bobby Roode get a little love. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I was completely okay with how that panned out. Um, because that was also my concern. How how were they gonna win the match to take the titles in a way that didn't harm either of the two of them? But oh. they managed to do that. Yeah, I agree. All right, uh, moving down, we have Bailey uh, de- defeating Charlotte Flair. What did you think? I liked that she beat Charlotte. The only problem I had was that the match was I thought was too short. Yeah. That was exactly what I was going to say. Uh, I was very surprised with as much build as they started to give this. Um, the match was so short. And what just strikes me as weird is how in the middle of this, um, Charlotte became a super baby face. Which continued subsequently later on in the week. It was weird. It's like... When did this happen? Because when they started this, when they were all on Alexa Bliss's thing and fucking Bailey pushed her off the chair in that very, very painful looking way, Charlotte was a fucking super heel. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, it's like they, they switched places. Yeah, they decided, well, we want Bailey to be a fucking heel now, so now she has to be a heel. Like, I, I don't think they're able. They're capable of booking a heel versus a heel. Because they still could have done that. But the, the promo Charlotte came out and cut was a babyface promo. Like, you could have had a baby, I mean, a heel cheat to beat a heel. But that's not how that was presented at all. And that's my big problem with it. Is Charlotte's not a babyface. Charlotte's like Randy Orton. She should never be a fucking babyface. Ever. Like it just like, it just doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, it it doesn't work. There's very rare cases. I, I can't even think of one right now that would work with her. But yeah, she's a natural fucking heel. And I just there's no explanation for it. Just all of a sudden Bailey's heel, so Charlotte's baby face. Like why can't Charlotte still be the queen who's just now getting attacked by this new heel? Have a heel versus heel dynamic. I I do like how they've like slowly turned Bailey more and more into like an evil heel. Yeah, like I mean, like how do I put it? Yes, I agree fully because that's what I said off air also. But it, it it's they had her turn by beating the fuck out of people with chairs. So, I mean, so it's it's. But yeah, where she's like, oh no, I'm a good person, and now she's cheating on like cheating to win. And then grabbing the title and run away, which I fucking LOL for real when I seen that. When she fucking ran out of the ring all fast and grabbed the title and ran up because she cheated. I was like, that was fucking brilliant. Well, see, like, I like it because they've kind of slow burned it where it's not like, okay, snap your fingers, you're an evil heel now. You know what I mean? Where it's like a slow progression into it. It's it's okay. Let, let's just see how long it goes. I would have liked to see uh, her and Sasha as champions, which would bring us to another match in a little, you know, in a little bit. But um, yeah, I'd like to see former tag team champions as each brand's champion. Like the first tag team champions are now champions of the <coughs> brand as heel. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, well. I agree with you. All right, um, next we have The Revival defeating The New Day for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. This was another one I was very okay with how things were booked. Like, I didn't think it was amazing. I thought it was a good match. Uh, I thought it was a really good match. Um, And I liked the way that it was booked. Like, I liked how they took care of Big E. They could have taken care of... uh, What's his name? Um, Xavier. But they decided to fucking make him tap out instead. Which was surprising to me. Well, yeah. I think but within the context of his knee was injured. They were working his knee over. Um, yeah. It, 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 to me, that wasn't so much like a completely clean tap. Because they ripped off his fucking... Like, they ripped his, you know, his tight and... Yeah, it was a good match. I'm happy with the outcome. 
Yeah, no, I got you. It was a very old school, uh, 80s, like, tag match, work, a body par, etc. Yeah. But I thought, yeah, it was cool to see the Revival uh, win those titles. It, they deserve it, man. They're, they're probably one of, if not the best tag team they have. Yeah, they're definitely up there, yeah. All right, let's keep it moving. We have Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross defeating Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. This was meh. I couldn't care less. Let's let's yeah. This is like what you would call the the bathroom break or popcorn match. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It just they they threw this together so quickly. Like they could have not had. Oh no, you have to have this fucking. Uh, title match because every fucking belt gets defended and nine champions even though we have 75 titles um i don't know i just i i, I didn't think there was enough build um and they try to put a story together uh where they could have just had some kind of like gauntlet to see who would like it, there's a million other things they could have done i don't know how these two got the title the whole i mean uh, how they got their match the whole fucking thing was, you're ugly, you're ugly, you're ugly, you're ugly, you're ugly. So, I don't know. I, I was not impressed. Yeah, it's that, like, shit you say when you're in, like, high school. Yeah. Yeah, this this was probably the worst one of the night for me. Yeah, this is the one I really couldn't care less about. Because I was, it's, it's, it, it, it wasn't good. All right, next we have Shinsuke Nakamura defeating The Miz. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess Sammy is a good heel, but he's just so fucking annoying. Like, I, I, I really don't want to watch the segment season. Yeah, I mean, he's, like, no... obnoxious. Yeah, which is, I mean, it's working, but it's working too much. Like, it's working for real. It's, like, it's working past kayfabe. I'm like, I, I just don't want to watch this. Like, there's no reason for me to watch this. Like, I, I don't find him, in, like, it's not, like, endearing obnoxious. It's just, no. like, I really find this character to be obnoxious. And then, like, The Miz, good God. They've done, like, nothing with him since he's turned babyface. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, It's unfortunate. It's, but, you know, it's, they need to give him back his fucking title he's the only one who's made that belt worth anything it's true in the last uh, i don't know how long probably last decade yeah i i think that's a safe statement oh absolutely all right next we have kofi king or excuse me sasha banks uh defeating becky lynch by dq I was okay with this until they came back to the ring and I realized that the match had had, had been thrown out. Because they didn't say anything. They did not say that the match was over until they had their fight in the stands and came back. And Corey Graves is like, we've been informed that the match was uh, that the referee called for disqualification for Becky's use of the chair. Yeah, I thought it was a lame way for a finish. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, I thought it was a great match. Uh, it, it definitely set up Hell in a Cell, which is that I can understand. But I think there were other ways that they could have gotten to a very similar ending without it. Because it's just like, I don't know, I thought that was just bad taste. Because yeah. it was a cool segment. You don't see women fight like that in the back. And just to find out that it was for no reason, it was just like, man, this didn't mean anything. Yeah, it's, it was just like, the match had already stopped, and they're just brawling. But you don't know that. You think the yeah, match no, is still I going just on mean after the fact. Yeah. When you find out, you're like, "Well, that was just a waste of time." Yeah, and then fucking, and then Pat Buck, Pat Buck's uh, sighting. Yeah. He's in the ring trying to break it up. So big ups to Pat Buck. Pat must be up on the fucking upper echelon if he's always one of the guys that's on TV. Like he, he. I'm glad he's getting the fucking respect he's due. Because you don't see Abyss on TV. No, and then you always see him, like, when they film stuff backstage, like, right before you you go to the curtain, you see him. Really? 
Yeah, I've seen him like once or twice on huh. on stuff. I'm trying to remember. It might have been SummerSlam. So they got him working in Gorilla. I maybe I don't know, but I've seen him like in that area when they filmed. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, no, he's good. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, I'm so happy for him, man. Bro, I can't imagine what was going through his head with that shit with Big Cass. Like, just imagine, like, he, like he, he got his dream job. This guy comes here, punches him in the face. Like, what if I lose my job? Yeah, we got to talk about that after this. Oh, that's right. That happened after we recorded. Yeah. We'll get All into right. that when we're done this. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, moving on, what I was said before. Kofi Kingston defeating Randy Orton to retain his WWE championship. Um, I said it last week that I thought he was going to get past Orton and lose it to whoever he feuded with next. And that seems to be what's going to happen now that we find out that it's going to be Croc Lesnar. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm over Kofi being champion. Like, I don't, like, the more he has the belt, the more I realize I really don't enjoy watching him wrestle. If that makes any sense. Like, like, his stuff is old now. You know what I mean? Like, all the high-flying stuff that was exciting isn't exciting anymore because it's all he does. I got you where it's just, how do I want to say it? His run has, like, ran its course. Yeah, I mean, like, think about how many times, like, do you do you really look forward to what kind of stupid thing Kofi's going to do to stay in the Royal Rumble every year? No. But they bill it as something. Because why? Because they've done it. Every year for like the last 10 years. Yeah, because it's always like, what stupid thing is he going to do now? It's almost like, uh, you know, you're a one-trick pony. Yeah, and it's like, I'm just, I'm happy he he got his due. But I think it's time to change it up. But I don't think Brock is the answer. I'll tell you this, and this might shock you. Okay. I would have him not lose the title on the first episode of Fox just to swerve everyone. Uh, okay, so long as they have something else planned. But I think Fox wanted Brock. I'm pretty sure they did. So, I mean, it's, it's you know, un unfortunate, but... It is what it is. I mean, if Brock is going to be around more weeks, then I'm okay with him having the belt. But I'm, I'm not when the belt's not going to be there. But you know what? You may be right, because I don't think they're going to be allowed to not have a top champion on that show. Yeah, well, this is the crazy thing. This is going to be Lesnar's first match on television, I think they said, in 15 years. That's crazy. Because he's never wrestled on TV since he came back the second time. When he attacked Cena? Yes. Huh. Interesting. That's what they got to do with fucking Bray Wyatt. He should... The Fiend should never have a match on Raw or SmackDown. Yep. We're going to get into that, too, in a little bit. Um, next, we have Eric Rowan defeating Roman Reigns in a no-DQ match. Only reason why I'm okay with it is because it saw the return of Luke Harper. Dude, I was thrilled to see him. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I'm a fan of his, and, uh, you know, I want to see him do something for now. Like, you know, anytime we've brought him up, I've absolutely said, like, I want to see him do well. You know, so yeah, I was very happy with that. I want to see where this leads. Hopefully they have some idea. <sighs> yeah, because I'm like, okay, well that happens. And it, it almost makes you feel like, well then Reigns needs a partner. <laughs> yeah, Daniel Bryan. That's where they're going with this. Daniel Bryan's going to be his partner. Yeah, yeah, because... Yeah. Yeah, that's where this is going, because he's been wrestling babyface when they're in the Philippines. Oh, okay. And it and it also makes sense. Like, you know, um, that's a natural progression for this, because, you know, on SmackDown, they, they both beat the shit out of Daniel Bryan. Yeah. 
So, but yeah, no. Um, back to the pay per view. I thought the match was okay. Uh, I think a lot of it was lost because just a couple of matches earlier, they had that whole thing with Becky and Sasha that ended up meaning nothing. Um, and a lot of their match ended up taking place in the middle of the ring, even though it was like no DQ or street fight. So, I mean, it was... I think they used it twice in, in one night. And the first time, they didn't use it right. And I think a lot of fans lost the momentum. I don't think people really gave a fuck about that. They cared once once Luke Harper came back. Yeah, I'll say this. I thought Rowan held his own. Oh, absolutely. I mean, but that's also a testament to how good Roman is now as well. Yeah. You know, so... I you know, agree with it was, that. It was an okay match. I'd, I'd give it like a C. Yeah, average. That yeah, that seems fair. All With right. a B plus ending, maybe A minus ending. Yeah, there you go. And uh, last but certainly not least, Seth Rollins defeating Braun Strowman for the Universal Championship. Well, what did to you retain think? it, I should say. What do you think about it and how it was booked? I I thought it was an it was probably the best match Braun's ever had. Okay, yeah, I can. And I can see that. I'm okay with the way they booked it in the sense of it took Seth like a Herculean effort to beat him. Yeah. But, and you and I have both talked about this off air. I don't think you should have Braun Strowman in these matches if he's going to lose. Yeah, it, it. I don't think it made. I mean, I'll. It, they may be doing this just so they could really feed this to the fiend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know, um, that's the only sense that I can make out of it. But yeah, I don't see a reason um, to constantly use him because I don't really think if it doesn't happen too often, I don't think people will remember that he's lost all of these things, but you run the risk of turning him into the big show where everybody knows big show is going to lose or Mark Henry later in his career or in the th- throughout most of his career. That's not take anything away from them, but they weren't booked like monsters. Like big show should have had a year plus title reign. Yeah. And be booked not as a big blubbering, crying idiot, but a fucking legitimate giant that other men could not compare with. I 100% agree. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I liked the effort that it took. It required, like, I liked the, the strong kick out at one after the first stomp. Um, I just don't think it was needed. I don't think Braun needed to be in this match. I don't think he needed to lose this match. I don't think it did anything really for Seth. Because he already beat Brock, and Brock beat fucking Braun, so... Like, very well, I, quickly, I, too. I've mentioned this before, dude. They've just really soured me on Seth in the last, like, few months. A lot of people, bro. A lot of people just can't stand Seth anymore, bro. I don't... They basic, And I hate to use this analogy because the dude has gotten so, so much better... But they turned him into, like, Roman when the fans, like, revolted against Roman. <laughs> yeah, but, see, I, I don't know if this is WWE's fault or if this is just organically people are just beginning to hate him. I think... He's, ahead, because he's not... Because I don't really think he's being booked Roman strong yet because he did just lose to fucking Lesnar. I mean, he did get it back, but... You know, I mean, it's it's. I haven't really seen this as a Roman Reigns kind of push. No, I, I think, and this is me, at least from the internet fans, he did himself no favors with the shit he, he said to Will Ospreay. Yeah. Yeah, the moment he brought up fucking bank accounts is when I think a lot of people were like, whoa, like, relax, buddy. Like, this is wrestling. It's well, not... And- with casual fans, I'll tell you this. I was watching Raw this week when he had the opening segment, and my mom was out in the living room, like, playing on her tablet or doing something. 
And she, when he started talking, she gave this like, like annoyed face. And I was like, why are you doing that? She's like, I don't like to hear him talk. And I was like, why do you say that? She's like, he has such a very annoying nasally voice. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Hunter. <laughs> and just I from someone hey, that Hunter doesn't watch the program, I just thought that yeah. was interesting. Yeah. He has a very nasally, very, he's not, like, you don't want to hear him cut promos. Like, it, it's, he does not have a, a, a good speaking voice. Like, The Rock would command attention when he spoke. Uh, oh, God, what, yeah. What's, what's his name doesn't? Uh, I will Shasta say this, doesn't. I love the ending to the show. Oh, I, I thought it was absolutely great. I, yeah, I agree. I think that was so cool. And then and then they carry it over to Raw the next night. Yes, and I yeah, I really enjoyed how um the Firefly Funhouse was presented and this is the I think the whole thing was taped. I think they just left a big segment for Seth to cut that one line where he actually spoke to it and interacted because this is the first time anybody's actually interacted yeah quote in you know quote unquote with it because when fucking finn was there finn just kind of stood there like a deer in the headlights i um, personally liked it and then at the end of the the promo that bray cuts where he's like holding his hands up against yeah. his chest basically they had like the super zoom into his eyes. Yeah. And um, I, I give him credit because the way he held that made you feel really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. No, he's he's good. He's really good. I will say I think there was maybe I could have done with without maybe one of those Firefly Fun Houses last night. Yeah. Um. The one where he already has the picture of Seth, I could have probably done without that one. Oh, the one where he says he's his new best friend. Yeah, because you know, is, is he had an attack Seth yet? Like, I just, I don't know. I don't think you needed that. I think enough was applied, implied. I mean, I, I, I feel that's kind of like you didn't need to tell people that he was gonna attack him by doing that. No, I got gotcha. you. Besides, he already attacked him the night before. <laughs> yeah. And I liked how he ended up coming out and, um, like, how that worked at the end of Raw with Kane in the ring. And um, I really liked that with Bray taking down Kane. I, and and yeah. it's scaring the shit out of fucking Seth. I love that he didn't touch him. Oh, me too, that he was just like a fucking, like the boogeyman, just right there in your face. I can't, I'm not going to touch you, but I'm going to get as close to you as possible and just be absolutely fucking horrific right in your face. Yeah, um, the one thing I loved about that final segment was, it was, um, when The Fiend came out and they showed just him behind Kane and Kane kind of like standing there knowing yeah. he was behind him. That was a really cool visual. Yeah, yeah, with Kane just kind of looking like, uh, Starting to look over his shoulder, and then yeah. Bray just, yeah, yeah, I, I, that's a really cool fucking visual. And then, um, at the very end of the show, where they played like the song where it was all like screwed up and upside down, and I was like, this is weird. Yeah, they had one fucking commercial break though, bro, where they played that fucking song for so long, and then they did it again at the end, like they played that oh right after the first fucking firefly funhouse yeah they just they just kept the music playing over over them talking and everything it was creepy kevin dunn wasn't there uh production was in some somebody else's hands uh that night apparently there were also upside down graphics also yeah there's a lot of people saying they think that was because of the fiend but i don't know but yeah but you know what i think by the lack of them addressing any of it 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 that that makes it a little bit harder to believe because you know it, it's um they overly address everything and That's it seems true. like a lot of people are pissed off about the fucking fiend bray wyatt the fiend bray wyatt the fiend bray wyatt the fiend bray wyatt shut the fuck up michael cole because yeah. he's he's gonna ruin it screaming the fiend bray wyatt over and over and over again 
again. Well, that's why I'm glad he's going to be on SmackDown soon, so or so the rumors say. Oh, really? They're going to move they they want to move him to SmackDown. Huh. Like Oh yeah, f- yeah. The rumors I heard is that they want like new people for Raw and new people for SmackDown. Oh, interesting. It was, but the rumor I read was uh, Vic Joseph and I forget the other person was going to call Raw. Yeah, Dio Madden. Yes. Fucking former wrestler who's had a month practice being a fucking uh, announcer. I would love if they let Vic Joseph do Raw. It would be fantastic. Yeah, but the other guy has like a month worth of experience. He's yeah, a fucking. I don't fucking, know who he is. He's a wrestler who who got hurt and can't wrestle anymore. Dio Madden. Oh man. Yeah, so I mean, like you know, but yeah, you know, a couple months training. Come on, come on to our flagship television show. Yeah, I got a question for you. I I forgot to send it to you earlier. Have you seen um, Seth and Bray are apparently already doing like the house show loop? Okay. And there's a video of one of their full matches out there. Huh. Have have you seen it? Yeah, I watched it earlier today. Your thoughts? I I liked it, but you could tell they're trying to get like comfortable with each other. How so? It it wasn't very long. It was maybe 10 minutes. Well, that's that's really not bad though. I mean, it's. I mean, I know how show like things are a little longer. That's still ten minutes. That's that's still a that's a fucking eternity in the ring. Well, that's uh, true. Plus, they've worked together before. I mean, it may be a new character, but they've. I mean, they've had the Shield and the Wyatts before. They've definitely been in the ring. I would. Uh, that yeah. Shit ton of times. The interesting thing was uh, Seth won by DQ. Well, yeah, I mean, you because those those are usually for the title. I mean, at the house shows, like you know, Fiend Bray Wyatt for what you call you know, for the WWE title, those yeah, are considered. Um, you know, they, so it's they, like they booked him really strong, though. Yeah, you have to. I mean, like, there's no way you can have that guy really fucking lose. I I'd, I'd love to see him just fucking destroy Seth in Hell in a Cell. Like, I really would prefer to see Seth get as little offense as possible. Well, listen, uh, hear me out for a second. What they did, um, Bray basically got DQ'd because he wouldn't break the mandible claw in in the ropes. Okay. And basically, long story short, it um, eventually, I think Seth gave him, it was either three or four of the stomps to get him down. And he went to grab his title and the crowd was heavily booing that he got him down on the ground. And then um, he went to, like, check to make sure he was down, like an Undertaker-type thing. And then he popped right back up and put the mandible claw on, and the lights went out, and he was gone. (laughs) It better not be the fucking finish at Hell in a Cell. But they can't do that at Hell in a Cell. It's Hell in a Cell. You can't be DQ'd, so... Exactly. But um, they kind of build him like the Undertaker was funny, because he... He did one of the stomps during the match, and he and Bray literally popped right back up and just put his arms out like, "Give me a hug." <laughs> yeah, that's fucking great. And like, scared the shit out of Seth because his back was turned. He didn't see it, and he turned around, and he was all horrified. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like, I think the match is gonna be great. I mean, like, it just it. I don't know how much I want to see fucking Bray Wyatt take any offense. Not yet. Yeah, well, I saw... I watched this match. It was short, and he basically had, like, 90% of the offense in the match. Yeah, I'd like to see something reminiscent of what fucking Lesnar did to Cena. I'd be okay with that. No, I mean, it's, it's... And then I would say keep the fucking title on him for a very long time yeah. like have him like with the firefly funhouse or have him around as bray wyatt with the title but like i don't ever have fucking like the fiend or bray wyatt compete on 
anything but a pay per view. Yeah. Like I, I, I would rarely even have to fiend out for a full segment, other than uh, a pop up where he attacks someone. I'm gonna tell you this: I wouldn't be shocked if, um, and this is just me speculating. I have no idea uh, if they moved Seth Rollins to SmackDown. Why? Because he's kind of like wrestled everyone on Raw. Like there's nobody really else other than the Fiend left. Yeah, this is true. Like, then just something to freshen it up and, you know, switch people around. And like you said, if Bray wins the title, let him just kind of run the show with an iron fist, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, like, what I really think should happen is is that he ends up beating Lesnar at Mania. That would be awesome. Because... I look at it like this. Lesnar took something from The Undertaker. Why can't he give it to the new Undertaker? Yeah. Well, and I a, had somebody a, message me earlier and they said, well, if Brock, if Bray and Brock both win the titles, then they would fight each other at Survivor Series. Oh, that's right. Because don't they usually do like champion versus champion? That that's what they've done the last couple of years. Absolutely, you know it's the only thing with Raw and SmackDown. So I don't think they can use that this year. Well, but it will be after the draft, which apparently is going to be like a legitimate draft. It's it's they're real like both company both um, networks want definitive. I mean distinct uh, rosters, so yeah, they have um, to do this. It, it's literally right after Hell in a Cell. It's. Is it? Isn't it the second Thursday? I mean, the, the is it the first or second uh, SmackDown? The second. Uh, so it's the second SmackDown and the following uh, Monday Night Raw. Yeah, because the the Hell in a Cell, if memory serves me right, is the first Sunday in October. It may be. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the sixth. But anywho, we got to talk about, before I forget, the uh, Pat Buck uh, big cast thing. Yeah, for those who don't know, uh, do you want to explain it? Basically, um, big cast got into an altercation with Joey Janela at a WrestlePro show in New Jersey. Um, I guess they had some kind of argument. And then uh, Big Cass and Pat Buck, who is the owner of WrestlePro, got into it. And uh, he, um, Pat Buck slugged him, or hit him, right? I don't know. I don't, or at least uh, that's the rumor. Yeah, what, what I know is um, they all worked the show the night before in Boston. And everything was cordial. Everything was fine. Janela and Cass were in the same locker room. Everything was fine. Um, he appeared kind of confused a lot backstage, and, uh, Buster Jackson apparently seen him walking around and was like, hey, you know, do you need something? And he couldn't find his car. So, he, they found his car, and he put his stuff inside the car. Twenty minutes later, he came in screaming about how somebody stole his sweater when he had put it in the car. And he threatened Janela, um... I heard he spit on Pat. Ooh. Um, I can't confirm this. You know, I mean, that's... Uh, I do know Kevin, prior to all of the physical stuff, was telling him, like, you know, we don't do shit like this here. Like, we don't attack each other. So, um... Yeah, uh... It ended up with uh, a physical altercation, which I don't know if he was actually hit or if Pat just took him down. Um, but local police were there, taking you know, like just being around uh, at the show and uh, asked to escort uh, him off the premises. At which point, he said concerning things to the police officers, uh, and they contacted a 
Um, ambulance had happened to be there. Uh, and then he was taken away on an ambulance. It's a it's a sad situation. Yeah, he has since released a statement on uh, through Enzo's um, social media, which I don't know why, but he uh, he basically apologized and he said it was it was basically a bump in the road. He still has a lot of work to do. He apologized directly to Kevin, to WrestlePro, to Pat. Um, he feels awful that he did this on such an important night for Pat. Um, and then Kevin responded back, you know, like, you know, uh, we all wish you the best, you know, like, good luck. It, it makes me wonder, and I'm not a doctor, but, um, if he's having such issues with like confusion and finding things. Oh, he was he... drunk. They had an open bottle of liquor in his car. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I thought it was concussion issues. Oh no, he was drunk. He was intoxicated. Okay. That's sad. That's even sadder than. Yeah. I just wish to do nothing but the best. I mean, he hinted that he doesn't even know if he's going to wrestle anymore. Yeah, which, I mean, it's it's you. he needs to worry about himself. You know, I mean, he's obviously not well. He thought he was. He's obviously not well. And that's not a knock on him. Like, you know, fucking... Addiction is an awful disease. I mean, it's. I'm one of these people who firmly believe that it's a disease. You know, some people want to say it's all about choices and stuff like that. I'm not. They never lived yeah. it. No. No. No, I wish him the absolute best. I know it's not easy. Yeah, I mean, especially he the. Fell, he fell off the wagon. Hopefully he can, you know, get back on the horse and, you know, people... live a clean life. People forget a lot of these guys are making so much money at a fairly young age. They're touring the world. They're becoming famous. Now I think WWE is beginning to institute like classes in NXT, which Big Cass and Enzo may have attended, but like how to deal with a lot of this stuff because to prevent spiraling out of control. I think that's part of like the classes is they kind of learn branding and, and like a whole bunch of other stuff other than wrestling. And part of it is how, how how to deal with the fact that you're now on TV all the time. I was going to say that, and then you're making, you know, X amount of money, and you you know, you probably more money than you've ever seen in your life, and you're 21, 22 years old. That's a big fucking change. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> like, I'll tell you right now, I probably would have done a lot of dumb shit if I had that kind of money at that age. <laughs> Bro, when he when he was in NXT or had just gotten called up or I don't know when it ended, but he was engaged to Carmella and they bought a house together. Yeah, I remember that. So I mean, it, it's it's you know how far things can fall sometimes. I mean, you know, like now he's making an embarrassment out of himself and fucking uh, indie wrestling shows. You know, it's it's sad. It really is. You know, it's like I do hope he gets his fucking help though. Oh, absolutely. I always liked Big Kaz. I mean, like, I always thought he had potential. Uh, I'm not a big fan <laughs> of big guys to begin with, like just tall guys. I don't feel like they can do very much. You know, Dijakovic is one of the fucking exceptions to that because that motherfucker is insane. Uh, oh, yeah, he is. And that's actually going to be on NXT next week. They're going to do a uh, fucking live Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijok uh Dijakovic or Dijakovic or whatever the fuck they want to call it. But yeah. That's exciting. How about Leo Rush, man? Did yeah, you see that? Uh, that was interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, I was really surprised with that. Um, I mean, he's good, man. He He's real good. And I hope that they just let him do his shit. He's actually number one contender now. That's what that match he had with Oni Lorcan was for. Number one contender for uh, the Cruiserweight title. Oh man, him and Gulak will tear it down. Yeah, I weirdly they looks like they're doing K Kushida versus Walter. Oh wow! Because some guy came out that I've never seen before, fucking Dylan Dejanes or 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 Damien, some black guy. Um, never heard of him. Yeah, bro, I, I I think it was his first time ever on TV, but all of a sudden Imperium comes out from NXT UK, which is 
Walter's uh, like group. Yeah. Um, beat the shit out of him. Then Walter comes out, and then Kushida still comes out and basically says like, "You're on my time now," because his whole gimmick is like Back to the Future and time and all this other bullshit. You know, he took the same gimmick from uh, New Japan. Because he's like Marty McFly and shit. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like they're going to fucking start a angle, I mean like a fucking program with them two, which I am very much all about. Yeah, that would be very interesting to see. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I have a couple friends of mine who, just the same few that I'm always bringing up because... They do, they are wrestling fans. They grow up being fans of wrestling. They really haven't gotten a chance to see a lot of indie stuff or NXT because they don't have the network. Bro, they're like, yo, this has been on WWE for all these years, and I didn't know. Like, it, for people who didn't know about it, it was a success. I, 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 I truly think so. I saw the ratings, and they uh, apparently they were happy with them. Bro, they fucking had 60% of their normal SmackDown audience for a fucking first time ever show on a time that they've never had a show before. They they don't do Wednesday shows. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, when I heard that it, it, it did over a million, I was very surprised. Yeah, um, I gotta say, dude, they started it off hot. Oh, yeah. That, um, my best friend, he's not a huge – like he knows women's wrestling, bra and panty match kind of shit. So whenever I've tried to get him to watch NXT women's matches, he's not really – I don't think he goes back and does it because he, he, he hadn't really seen good women's wrestling. He was so – he was like, these women are fucking fantastic. Dude, I um – I love, like, evil Io Shirai. So do I. Absolutely. And the the music they gave her, it just, like, everything fits. Yeah. Yeah, I think she could be a little bit less with the dramatic posing, though. Yeah. (laughs) There are times where I'm like, all right, I I understand it. I'm like, but I think you're going just a little bit much with that. You know, those fucking faces she makes. Yeah. I like, was, are you injured? Are you in pain? Is that what, like, like, I, are you angsty? Like, what's that face? Yeah. I don't know what that face means. I was legitimately shocked that Candace won. Yeah, me too. Because, um, I think they said it's in two weeks she's going to wrestle Baszler on the live uh, show. On the first night of AEW. The same night that they're going to be crowning the fucking AEW Women's Champion. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. Needless to say, I know what I'll be watching. Yeah, and the next day it's on the fucking network anyway, so... It That's what I'm saying. Network. I'll watch AEW and then watch NXT on the network the next day. Yeah, I mean, like, or even if I watched NXT first, I just DVR. Like, it's... Yeah. I don't understand why people think that there's some fucking war. It really isn't. Watch both of them. Enjoy them. Like, we're in the day of fucking DVR. It's going to be free the next day uh, to watch WWE. It's not like it was in the past where you had to have fucking tapes to tape it. and Like, you had, you had to be dedicated to being a fan. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I'm excited because, like, with either or, with AEW or NXT, it gets done at 10 o'clock. And then I could go watch American Horror Story right after. Yeah, that started this week, right? Yeah, it's the um, the new one's 1984. Yeah, I'm actually, you know, like, I I want to watch it, and it was something my wife and I were going to watch together, but that kind of seems like that's not going to be happening. It's um, it's an homage to the uh, slasher movies, and specifically, like, Friday the 13th. Who, uh, how many reoccurring people? Is this the fucking woman's... Oh, uh, I forget her name. Or is Jessica it like everybody's... Lang? No, that's not Jessica Lang. There, There's nobody that I remember uh, recently in it that I know. So it's none of the people from last season. Oh, I the didn't fuck? watch last season, so I can't tell you. 
it was a revisit of basically every fucking season. Yeah, I, I haven't seen... I didn't see last... I haven't watched it since Freak Show. Okay, I don't know which is which, because my wife and I were watching them all very quickly. Freak Show is the one with the... Where, where they were the carny people. Yeah, we just... I mean, like, I probably watched an entire season in a day, so I mean, oh, it's... Oh, okay, I got you. That's been, like, two or three years at least. Yeah. I tried to watch the hotel one, and I just didn't like it. That's yeah, the no. With Lady Gaga. Oh, that one wasn't bad. I didn't mind that one. I think it was because, like, it ended up being, like, vampires and, like, vampire stuff. And I'm, like, over that. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's just been, like, done a million times over. Oh, yeah, no, I, yeah, that didn't bother me. I thought it was done fairly well. Um, but, yeah, I'm not into any of that shit, fucking vampires. or I'm not really into horror or, I don't even know what you would call all that stuff. Uh, not horror story, because that I like. But, like, I'm not really into, like, zombies and, and yeah. any of that shit. So, I mean, but if, I, I like Walking Dead, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll tell you this real like quick. Um, you know, last Friday was Friday the 13th. Um, it was the 40th anniversary of the movie. Okay. And in the town that they filmed it in, uh, Blair, I think it's Blairstown, New Jersey. They had like a big like thing all last weekend with like where you could go and like a museum and shit. Did you go? No, I wanted to, but I, I didn't. Have, I'm short on money. Oh. One of my uh, things on my bucket list is to have eat at the diner that's in the movie. Is it still standing? Yes. Oh, cool. Like it's still open, and you can go there. That's that's what I mean. Like, is the store still functioning? That's yeah, cool. yeah. That's one of my things I want to do. I thought it would be cool. Cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. like a nerd for that stuff. Yeah, I'm not a big horror fan. That was the one genre that I never liked growing up. All right, uh, real quick before we get out of here, did you see um, apparently WWE is going to have a studio show with Renee Young? Yes. And there's, I'm reading, I read this earlier, I forgot to mention it to you. That there's four retired WWE stars being considered to be her co-host. Interesting. I hadn't heard that, but cool. There's, it's it's going to be called WWE Backstage. Okay, that's cool then, because I know that they just filed for what people think is going to be another show, because it wasn't filed for a character. It was filed under um, Goods and Services. Uh -huh. The trademark, and it's for WWE The Bump. Huh. So it was like kind of discussion like what that could be about. Yeah, I wonder what that is. But, yeah, interesting. But, um, uh, so anyway, much wrestling, we're not going to know what the fuck to do. Yeah. The, um, the four people that are being considered. To host alongside her are Booker T, Edge, Christian, and Paige. Huh. It's going to end up Booker T. Yeah, it's not going to be Christian because Vince hates him. Well, I just don't see why you would split up Edge and Christian, especially when they're still doing the fucking podcast together. Yeah. Um... It's going to end up being Booker T, but I think he's so fucking outdated. Like, I don't think you... I don't know. I think you put somebody new. I don't think you put fucking somebody retired there. Uh, yeah, like someone... I don't want to say somebody that's hip and with it, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it's, it's, well, whatever Booker T isn't. Yeah. <laughs> somebody that's with the times. Yeah. Um... But I'd still rather book it to you over somebody like Bubba Ray or fucking uh, Taz. Oh my god, what... they're so bitter. Oh, they absolutely are. Especially I had, Taz. Um, 
I had a friend of mine tell me he tried to talk to like Bubba Ray, and he was just a miserable sob. Yeah, he's not a nice guy at all. Oh, I've seen him and been within like 20, 30 feet of him. I'm, I'm not talking to this asshole. <laughs> yeah, he's not a nice human being. Well, you know, because you hear all this stuff, and I was just like, yeah, I'm not bugging him. No, I agree. Yeah, fuck that shit. That's a headache you don't need. Hell yeah. All right, before we get out of here, do you have anything special planned for the weekend? I have no idea, bro. I'm getting divorced. I have no idea. Uh, going to see my dad tomorrow. Yeah, haircut. That's How is your it. pops doing? Uh, he's going all right. I mean, he's doing all right, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess so. One day at a time, man. It's all we can do, right? Yes, sir. Nothing exciting on this end. I'm probably going to watch some college football later and then one of my buddies is coming over tomorrow we'll watch football for the day and just kind of hang out oh that's good then that's fun yeah just a nice like chill day yeah I like i i played the worst fucking fantasy teams <laughs> but last week i left so many points on the fucking bench bro and it's it funny because I was, I was on the phone with my friend when we were talking about it and as I'm making my decisions, it turns exactly to 1 o'clock, and I was just like, No, motherfucker! <laughs> so, yeah. That's that. funny. But, alright, man. Alright, on weekend. that note, we're going to get out of here for today, so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, give it a thumbs up, all of that good stuff, and we'll see you back next week. Have a good day, everybody. Adios.